Hello, everybody. Oh, I'll pull this down. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. It is good to see everybody joining us today for the first of my six part series on getting certified uh, as a Microsoft 365 certified developer associate. Um, in this series, I plan on going over in each one of the different uh, sessions that we're going to go through. I plan on covering uh, multiple uh, topics, each one of the different workloads uh, that we have in the, uh, in the, the certification. Um, this first one that we're going to do is, is going to be mostly about, or really all, about Microsoft Identity, or really it's uh, Azure AD. Um, so a couple things before we get started. Uh, I want to take a minute here and first kind of just cover a little bit of housekeeping things and what you can expect. A um, couple things first. So I've got a, we got a QA panel here that you can um, submit questions. I'm going to have plenty of time to go over questions and answer any questions that you have about Microsoft Identity or about the, um, uh, the identity specific to the exam and to the certification. Um, I'm also gonna, we're going to have time to also talk about the cert itself, just in general, if you have any questions. Um, specific workload questions, I'd, I'd, I'd like to kind of hold those off to different webinars that we're doing. I'm going to show you a list of all those in just a minute. Uh, and I got a few polls that I want to um, ask you a couple questions about. You may have already answered these on our website. Um, maybe you haven't. You know, we'll see. Um, but... Uh, yeah, um, there's also a, ch a chat that I've got set up here. I'm not going to be watching the chat as closely as I am the question. So I do see a couple of people saying hello and everything. And hi, uh, you know, it's good to, uh, I'm assuming that you're posting that because you can see me and you can hear me at least. Um, actually, can do, let's do this first just to make sure. Can I get some people to raise their hands and let me know that you can hear me? Ah, sweet. Those guys. I got some of my existing customers. Whenever we do our, um, our office hours, we see people raise their, I get people to raise their hand. Holy moly, my entire screen is now filled up with these little superimposed, this person raised their hand. Uh, so it's great. You can put all your hands down now. That's your developer calisthenics for the day. All right. So we got about an hour and I got a lot of stuff that I want to cover and I want to answer all of your questions and help you with this. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, very briefly, my name is Andrew Connell. I've been, uh, I'm the founder and the main person behind Voitanos. Um, I'm also um, uh, was, was quite involved in helping Microsoft develop the Microsoft 365 certification uh, for developers, um, as well as building a lot of the self-paced content. I'm going to give you a little bit more about my background with this uh, in just a minute. Um, I'm also an MVP uh, for uh, office development. Uh, I've been doing specifically SharePoint development for, let's see, 17 years. Wow, 17 years now, since 2003. Um, but I do a lot of stuff with identity and graph, um, more stuff with Microsoft Teams these days, um, and even um, I'm familiar also with office add-in based uh, development. Um, I have a podcast I co-host uh, with weekly episodes that get that come out every week um, about the Microsoft Cloud, and then um, we've been God, we're almost seven years into it now. And uh, I also <clears throat> I also am the founder of Voitanos, and uh, Voitanos is a, a, a it's primarily in the past has been focused on uh, SharePoint framework based education. Um, you're going to see that expand a little bit over the next over the, the rest of this year. Um, and, um, but yeah, I'll just tease that out. How's that? So we're gonna, we're gonna see it expanded a bunch of other stuff uh, throughout the year. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the exam and the certification. I, got, I wanna start off first though, and I wanna ask everybody um, a question here. How many of you are planning on taking the certification the, taking the exam, the MS 600 exam to pass the certification. And while you guys are asking these questions, while you guys are answering this, for those of you who don't know, there is one prerequisite to get certified and that is to pass the MS 600. Pass the MS 600 exam. That's the only thing you have to do. That's what I wanna make sure I get, make you aware of in this webinar series. We got six webinars we're gonna do over the course of three weeks, two a week. All of them are at one o'clock Eastern, except for today, because yours truly completely screwed up and did not look at my calendar. Somehow, when I scheduled these, I was looking at my wife's calendar. Don't ask me how I did that. Complete user error thing. 
at least I'm a developer. I'm not much of an end user. And um, I double booked myself. So uh, we'd already put the invites out, so I screwed that up. But this, this session is at 11 o'clock, uh, or sorry, at one o'clock today. Um, I look at that, we got one person who's already passed it and you're already certified. I wonder why you've uh, we've joined us. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll in about 10 seconds, eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we will end the poll. Oh, where's my mouse? In the poll. Sweet, all right. So um, what I see here is about 70% of you are interested in becoming, uh, are, are planning on taking the exam. And another 30% of you are like, yeah, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Well, hopefully I'm gonna convince you uh, to get, uh, to be interested in doing this. All right, so we will look at that uh, a little bit later. Oh, I have another poll for you a little bit later. So what are you gonna be tested on in the Microsoft 365 uh, certification during our webinar today? If you have any questions, post them in the uh, QA panel. Um, post them in the QA panel so that you can, um, uh, and I'd be I'm more than happy to, to answer those as we go along. What is the certification all about? What do you have to know? Well, there are five different workloads that you have to know and that you're gonna be tested on in the MS600 exam uh, to become certified. You're gonna to need to pass the exam with at least a 70% uh, among all of the workloads collectively together, 70% um, or better to be able to pass. Okay, so what that means is that you could have know nothing about one of these specific workloads. And if you know all the other ones, you're in great shape. So like for me, for example, my weakest area, if I had to pick, and I'm gonna ask you guys this in a minute, my weakest area is easily office add-ins um, because it's the least uh, customization or extensibility stuff that I do when it comes to Microsoft 365. So what things are covered? Microsoft Identity and Azure AD. So that is the one we're gonna to cover today. But then we have other uh, webinars we're gonna do related to Microsoft Graph, related to SharePoint, specifically SharePoint Online, Microsoft Teams, and Office add-ins. And then I've got a bonus one at the very end. So just a little bit of proof here. Do I know what I'm talking about? Well, here's my results of the, um, of the uh, SharePoint, um, uh, oh, sorry, not SharePoint, of the Microsoft 365 exam, the, the MS600 exam. I took the exam at the beginning of the year when it was still in beta, um, and now it's not, no longer in beta. Anybody can take it. I just took it because I couldn't wait. I wanted to take it as early as I could. Um, and I'm showing you what, what, how, what my results were. So um, this is a screen, and I, you can trust me that these are definitely my results because you can see I wasn't too thrilled about taking an exam at the time that I took it um, based on my picture. Um, so here um, it shows you the different areas, the different workloads. And so the first one here on Microsoft Identity, I scored at about a 90%, 88, 90%, uh, somewhere around there. Um, amusing enough, I actually did best in Graph and then SharePoint. So I thought that SharePoint would be my top one, but Graph was my top one, which is interesting. Um, at least it's interesting to me. Uh, but you can see that, you know, backing up what I said, that extending office, you know, I got a 78% um, on that one compared to, uh, to all of them. Yes, the graphic is a little pixelated. It's a screenshot from uh, a website. So it's okay. It won't be, uh, not all of them are like that. Uh, let's see. So let's go through some of this. Uh, another thing here, I see a question here from Michael is asking what part of SharePoint will be covered in the test. Um, we're gonna focus on this. Look, if, I'm not sure what you're asking with that. If you wanna go through and give me a, be a little bit more specific, like what are you looking for? Like SharePoint Online, SharePoint On-Prem. Um, but this is, we're gonna focus on identity today. SharePoint, let's focus on that when we get to the, the, the SharePoint webinar. Um, when you register for this webinar, um, you've only registered for this. Oh, we'll come back to that, sorry. I got ahead of myself. Let's talk a little bit about this certification itself, right? So, and I'll talk a little about the certification itself and the exam and my experience in taking it um, and some things that you're gonna wanna end up uh, probably paying attention to here. Um, so specifically, uh, 
the exam that you get to take is called the MS 600. I have a link to it that you see right there um, on the slide. You can copy that out um, and just go to that URL. It's a case sensitive URL. Just it's a little redirect. So you don't have to remember the whole long one. Um, that the MS 600 exam, um, that's going to be, you should set aside about two to three hours to take the exam. I think it took me about an hour, 45 minutes, hour and a half, something like that to take the entire exam. And it covers everything. You have to take it all at one time and it covers everything. You can take it at a testing center. Um, and there's also the uh, ability to take it at home. I took it at home. Um, and it's an interesting experience. They make you go through a, a really rigorous like uh, setup thing to make sure that everything has to be done, um, that you, you don't cheat, right? So somebody had a question here, Jose, uh, or sorry, not Jose, uh, Mr. Menendez, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your first name. I'm gonna mess that up. Um, is asking, can the exam be taken online? Yes, that's how I took it. I took it online at home. And man, they make you go through a lot of requirements. So you have to take, you have to clear everything off your desk. You have to take your phone. You have to go put that out of reach. Um, if you have two monitors set up, you have to make it, take one of them off and go set it way out of reach. Um, they make you take your phone and your webcam and, and take a video, a live video of your desk, of like the view from the, from the left side, the view from the right side, the view above you, the view below you. You can got to walk around with your phone and take a picture coming back at your desk to make sure there's nobody, and maybe from what you can see at your desk. They, they are very, very... Um, uh, uh, particular about making sure that nobody has any extra help when you're taking the exam. So much so that <clears throat> I even had during when we were at, at the start, the um, proctor made me hold my hands up like I had nothing on my hands or written on my hands. And they saw my watch and I had to take my watch off and go move it way out of reach and sitting at the desk. They listen to you during the entire thing. You got to have your mic turned on and your webcam turned on. And at one point, like one question was kind of confusing to me. So I had to read it out to myself. And they even came on and said, you can't talk because they don't want you copying the answers down or copying the questions down and selling them later. It's pretty intense. Um, so much so that if you have the option to go to a testing center, then that might be preferred. But again, in these days and times might make more sense to do it, um, to staying remote. Um, somebody asked a question there. Can you take, can you have a pen and paper to take your own notes? Nope can't have anything on the desk. Absolutely nothing. I had to take everything off my desk and move it away. The only thing that was on my desk was my laptop and my doc, my hub, my docking station. All right. So that's, oh, let me back up. That's the exam that we're going to go through a lot of that stuff um, today. The, um, for the, um, the certification itself, once you pass the exam, you are officially certified. Now, what does it mean that you're certified? So what Microsoft does, Microsoft Learning does, when they are testing your, um, your competency level, they're looking at three different stages or three different uh, points. The, the top level, or the, I guess the bottom level, let's call that, because usually they're working up to a higher level of an expert. The lowest level is a foundational level. And a foundational level is someone who has knowledge about the technology, maybe can't implement a solution, but they can speak intelligently about it. And I, the, way I like, the way I like to do it is, or the way I like to explain it is, um, I, like, I like to think about someone who is going into a meeting with a customer and they say their business problem and then that person can explain, here's what we're gonna build and here's how it's gonna work. They don't know the APIs, they don't know all the requirements for each individual thing but they generally know how all this stuff works. And so they can at least explain it and they can talk the talk. Somebody at the associate level is someone who has, and I know this is gonna sound a little weird, but just bear with me. Someone who at the associate level is someone who has four years of experience with the technology and they can do it on their own. And the reason I said, bear with me, it sounds a little weird is that <clears throat> Clearly, SharePoint Framework and Microsoft Teams hasn't been around for four years. So, but you're looking at someone with that kind of experience. So someone who can sit there and can actually do all this stuff without having to always look at the documentation every single time. They can get building and, and be productive. Someone at the expert level, the way I like to look at it is that somebody who can teach. 
that's somebody who can teach all this stuff and they can teach a class to someone to get them at the associate level. Um, the certification is testing people at the associate level. It's not testing at the foundational level. It's not testing at the expert level. Now, Microsoft is, the way it's designed is it's supposed to be Teams, SharePoint, and Office add-ins are at the associate level, whereas Graph and Identity are at the, or sorry, let me say that again. I messed that up. Teams, SharePoint, and add-ins are at the foundational level, whereas Graph and Identity are at the associate level. But when I took the exam, I saw questions on there about SharePoint and Teams that to me were definitely not at the foundational level. They were definitely at the associate level. Um, and we've had some feedback going back and forth with them when I gave them uh, feedback on the, on the exam. Um, I don't know if it was taken into account, uh, but I mean, it was, it was what it, it was. What it was. Um, the, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's what you're looking at in terms of, of how things are gonna be tested. Um, so a couple questions here, what components of SharePoint, like which part of SharePoint will the test focus on? Uh, it's mostly going, so think it's SharePoint framework. So it's not things like um, add-ins, it's not things like uh, spe very specific endpoints with the REST API with SharePoint, um, really not PowerShell. Um, let's see, what else would I say? It's not um, like column formatting and list formatting type stuff. Uh, it's, it's really SharePoint framework is the, is the main focus for everything, um, is, is what you're gonna be tested on when it comes to SharePoint, okay? All right, correct, no admin questions. This is not an IT pro exam, this is a developer exam. All right, now, what I want to show you here is if you weren't aware of this, we are doing, I'm doing um, six of these webinars over the course of the next three weeks. So they're always on Tuesdays and Thursdays, generally at 11 a.m. East Coast, Eastern Time, U.S. Eastern Time, which is a uh, UTC minus four or five. Oh, I just forgot. Oh, and of course the chat window is gonna cover it up. So is it UTC five? So let's say four. All right, so my bad. So they're generally gonna be um, all at 11 o'clock. And to be honest, the reason why I chose that um, the reason why they're at 11 o'clock is that's when, whenever I'm doing presentations for Microsoft um, and we have to hit the, the biggest audience, um, they require them to be at 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, which is 11 a.m. Uh, East Coast time, and it hits the majority of Europe and uh, Asia. Clearly, it's going to be a problem. It's always going to be a problem when you're trying to hit people in Australia or in the APAC region. Um, it is what it is. These are all being recorded. And I will publish all of these on the Voitano site. Um, they won't be published like right away when they're done. I'm gonna kind of batch them together and pull them together um, uh, at this, at, at, to, at a, uh, close together. I'm not sure if it's gonna be like on a weekly basis, like the two from this week are published or, or whatnot, um, but I will publish them as soon as, as, soon as they are available. Um, uh, so just stay tuned to the blog and we'll send out emails when these have been published. If you end up missing one, um, I'm going to do a fun one at the very end, which is a behind the scenes, the making of the exam. So if you want to learn a bit more about like what Microsoft's process is for doing this, um, I did an overview, uh, webinar similar to this with, um, another, another gentleman named, uh, Waldet Mastercars from Rencor, um, late in April. And this was a section that we like, let's just put this in at the end for like five, 10 minutes. And we got a ton of questions about this. So I figured let's do a whole session on it. So if you're interested in see how Microsoft goes through this, I can give you the entire experience. Um, I will tell you my, my background uh, with, the, with the certification uh, is I was involved at the very beginning to help identify what topics should be candidates for an associate level certification and a foundational level certification in each one of these five different workloads. Um, I was involved in the whittling down of the, um, of the topics and prioritizing what should be there. And that involved sitting down with uh, a bunch of people from the community um, and people from each one of the different uh, product groups and subject matter experts, as well as people from Microsoft Learning and Microsoft 365 uh, Development Marketing. And 
we identified all the stuff that needed to be done. That generated what's called a spreadsheet. Um, that is effectively, it says all of the objective domains. These are all the things that you could be tested on. And then that main spreadsheet was provided to the exam question writers, the people who are writing a course, an instructor led course uh, for the, um, to take the, if you want to go buy, buy a course and go and um, sit in a, uh, and have an instructor teach you and get, help you get certified um, from that. And then uh, also was uh, handed to the person who built all of the self-paced training. Um, so I was not involved in writing questions. Um, technically, that was a conflict of interest. I went back and forth Microsoft Legal and I wasn't allowed to do that. Um, I was allowed to do it, but I wouldn't be allowed to continue doing what I'm doing with Voitanas because I wouldn't be allowed to sell training related to the same thing if I knew what was on the exam. Um, so I wasn't allowed to do that. And I, also, and I did not write the course because they're frank, to be completely frank, um, their requirements for the timeline on how fast the course had to be written were completely unachievable and what they wanted. Um, not only that, I thought the course was going to be outdated really quick. Um, and I just wasn't going to be involved in it. I, don't, I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think they were making the right decision. And I just, I walked away from that part of the project. Um, I was involved though in building a lot of the self-paced content. Um, I, I will tell you that like I do have plans uh, with Voitanos, we will be working, I will be doing a course when I finish my existing SharePoint framework course, there will be something that I will have uh, from Voitanos that's gonna, that will cover the MS 600 and the topics in the MS 600. Um, and for those of you who are current customers of Voitanos, I can tell you it is not gonna be anywhere near as expensive as what the course that we have right now. It's not gonna be nearly as gigantic and all that um, because I'm gonna leverage a lot of the stuff that I did from Microsoft already that is freely available. Um, it doesn't cover everything, but I'm gonna help you use the, make the best use of your time and your money uh, to be able to take advantage of what's already available out there and give you the tips and the tricks on what you need to be able to pass it. If you're interested in any of these other, um, uh, any of these other modules uh, or these other um, webinars that we're gonna do over the next few weeks, tune in and uh, uh, subscribe to the Voitanos mailing list, go to our site. We have a link uh, on our, one of our recent blog posts that has a link to each one of these that you can register for. Just because you registered for this webinar today does not mean you got registered for all of them. Each one is individual, okay? So just making sure that point, I spelled that out. All right, so let me do this. So why don't, let me ask, before we dive into um, the identity section, I want to ask you another question. Actually, is it two questions? Yeah, it's going to show up as two questions. So I'm going to ask, I want to ask you two questions here. What would be your strongest and your weakest areas of the exam, of, of these different workloads? What do you feel, what technology are you strongest at and which one are you weakest at um, when it comes to these different topics? All right, so while you're answering that, I'll give you about a minute to do that. Let me look at these questions that we've got and let me see if I can, and I can respond to any of these, um, any of these questions. So we've got, uh, let's see, what components of SharePoint? I answered that one uh, from Michael. Uh, Praveen, how is SharePoint framework connected to Azure AD with respect to the graph API? So that's gonna be more of a technical question specific to SharePoint framework. I don't, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna try and go into that too, I don't wanna do that too much, okay? Uh, I don't want to go into that much detail here. So Praveen, um, if I have time, I'll come back to that at the end of the session here, but that really is more of a SharePoint frame. You're asking a technical question on how do I do something? And we're not going to do that in these webinars. Okay. This is more about what is the exam. That's a different, that'd be a different kind of a topic here. Um, are there any practice tests? Jim's asking any practice tests for the certification, not from Microsoft. There's a bunch of like third party stuff. And these are people, these are companies that generally have hired someone to go in and take the exam, do what they can to steal the questions or to remember them and then come out and do a brain dump and then write them all down. Your mileage may vary on those. I don't really recommend doing that. I'd rather, I think you, if you try and memorize the questions from those different practice exams, I, you know, I don't, I've never had great success with that. I will tell you that the exam you take is going to be different from the exam I take. And if you took it again, it's going to be yet even different because there's a whole pool of questions that the exam is going to be derived on as it's going through. Um, for SharePoint, no admin questions. I answered that one. 
I'm not sure what that was about. Yes, we are recording it, so I answered that one. Uh, do we know if there'll be a foundational level exam for technical sales and business analysts? We do not know that. We do not know that. Um, that was discussed when we were building it. That was discussed when we were building the exam. We just, but we don't know if that's what, uh, if they're going to do that. They didn't have the budget for it this year, this fiscal year, but their fiscal year is up in June. So we'll see if they do it next year. Today, you're going to talk about MSAL a little bit, a little bit. Yes, Lewis. I'm going to talk a little bit about MSAL. Um, my work experience is only on-prem. How far am I behind? It depends. I mean, the different workloads are, are all over the place. I mean, with teams and you've only done on-prem, then you're going to be deficient on the entire team section. Um, Microsoft Graph is only online. So you're going to be deficient there. Um, SharePoint framework is going to cover, it's going to cover stuff that, that goes all the way up to what's in SharePoint online and not on-prem. So you'll be some deficient there. So this is, remember, this is Microsoft 365 certification, which is about, Microsoft 365 is online experience. It's not on-prem. Uh, let's see. Beta exams free. No. So the beta exam, first of all, Christopher is asking is, are the beta exams free? So no, they're not. They were deeply discounted. Um, but, and we didn't know, we took it like in January, but we didn't find out in like until late March if we passed or not. Um, and they were not free. And they're no longer available now. The beta exams are over. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then a dumb question. Oh, wait, sorry. No, you said there was a dumb question. What's the difference between the exam types, exam and certification, certification types? So Arun, they're, they're, the difference is, is that you have to take an exam and pass it to achieve a certification. So think of the certification as like the trophy for passing the exam. So you don't do both. You only do one and you, the result of passing the exam is the certification. Do I have enough time during the exam or do you have to hurry? I thought, I thought they gave you more than enough time. You don't have to hurry. Uh, so I, I thought you have more than enough time, Ronald. Um, Praveen is asked a question about, about uh, our module today. Um, That's a good question. So um, Azure uh, Identity Module, does it include Azure AD Sync, ADFS? No, that is all stuff that I would, is not developer stuff. That's infrastructure, that's IT pro stuff. We're gonna be talking about creating, well, you know what, you're gonna see it. But no, we don't, if it's, if it's IT pro stuff, we don't do it. All right, so let me go ahead and end that poll. Let's see what we said. The vast majority, I'll come back and do more questions in a little bit later. The vast majority is saying that uh, the strongest tech that you're associated, that you have, is SharePoint. That's where you're strongest. Less than, and we're talking like, all the other ones are less than 10%. Um, the weakest, what are people weakest at? Ah, you're my people. About 60% of you said the weakest is office add-ins. Well, guess what? Don't feel scared about it because I am too. And you see that I passed. And I even got through the office add-in piece with a 60 some percent or the 70 some percent. So no big deal. Uh, the next one was identity and graph. I find that so interesting. I've asked this question to a bunch of, my, to a bunch of people already and graph is way up there. That's really interesting to me. I thought more people knew it. Okay, we're halfway into this. I want to give you a bit of an update on, you know, what is the exam, what things are covered in it. Um, I'm going to be doing the same type thing for the other webinars, but about, about for people who don't join every single one. But now let's dive into identity and what do we have to do with identity? The identity section of the module or of the, of the exam is going to account for about 20 to 25% of the questions on the exam. Okay. Um, I found that to be on the higher side. In my experience, there were more than 20%. I found it to be a lot closer to 25%. Um, in addition, Microsoft identity is an all encompassing term that covers both Azure AD and Microsoft accounts, MSAs. So work in school and uh, this other type. Um, I do not but the certification is all about Microsoft 365 development, which does not include the Microsoft accounts and consumer services. So this exam, when you go to do this exam, you will only have to know things up related to Azure AD, 
you will not have to know things related to Microsoft accounts. So even though it says Microsoft identity, just that's a marketing term. This is really only about Azure AD, all right? Now there's a bunch of content that you can go take a look at for self-paced exam or for not self-paced exams for self-paced study. There are lectures that are involved with this. There are also labs. I've written all of this content. Okay. Um, you can get to it from this learning path that I have listed here on the slide. So docs.microsoft.com slash learn slash pass slash M365 dash identity dash associate. That points to about five or so modules that cover lots of different topics. And a lot of topics I'm gonna to go through in just, in, in just a minute. So, like what? Well, let's go through some of these topics. So what things do you have to know? What things do you have to know about Microsoft identity? And this is where you wanna take notes. You need to understand how to register an application. And what I mean by that is by going to the Azure AD Admin Center and being able to not only register an app, but be able to manage all the different settings on that app. And when I say all the settings, just think like the critical path of all the settings. Don't think like I got to know every nook and cranny of everything inside that UI. You need to understand the different kinds of accounts uh, that you can create, right? Does it support single tenant or multi-tenant or uh, in personal accounts? What does that mean? Right? Even though it's not about micro, this exam is not about Microsoft accounts, you do need to understand what that means. So you need to understand what single tenants are, what multi tenants are, and what personal accounts are. You understand what that is. You need to understand when you go to register an app, you need to understand things about uh, what the different kinds of authentication flows are available to you and when you would choose one over the other one. It's and when I say authentication flows, we're talking about the, what are called OAuth flows. Things like the authorization code flow, the implicit uh, grant, the um, client credentials flow, um, the resource password owner uh, flow, those different ones. You should understand what those are. How are they different? How are they unique? How are they different? And what scenarios do I wanna use each one of those? It's nice when you sit down, you actually go to build something because I think that each one of these flows are gonna, you're gonna get self-selected into each one. You're not gonna have a hard time picking one because whatever you're building is gonna effectively tell you, this is what you're gonna have to use. If you're being, building a single page app, you've only got one choice and that's the implicit flow, at least today. And I know someone's gonna raise their hand and say, yeah, but it's been deprecated and uh, da, 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 we're supposed to, you know, today, we're still using the implicit flow when it comes to Azure AD. Okay. Um, yes, Azure is talking about doing some changes there. Um, and they're in different degrees of how much stuff has been done. But as far as the certification goes, I can tell you that none of that's there. Wink, wink. None of that stuff is there. It, implicit flow is how you do single page apps. You also want to know about building, about de, uh, defining roles for your apps. So how can I go into the app manifest in the admin center? And how can I define things like product owners or product administrators or product readers, uh, viewers? And then how do I assign users to those different roles in these different apps? And then how can I actually write an app that's going to consume data from, um, or that's going to be able to, to uh, make sure that I only show certain functionality or enable certain functionality in my app to people that are in specific app roles? So that's one thing that you're gonna to need to pay attention to. Another thing that you're gonna to need to know, how do you implement authentication on your custom apps? You're gonna to need to, and while I'm using, I, I have, uh, it says msal.js, it's not just the msal.js, it's also the .NET provider. So here's what you need to know. You should understand the difference between the two main libraries with Azure AD, ADAL, which is the Azure AD authentication library and MSAL, the Microsoft authentication library. ADAL goes to the V1 endpoints for Azure AD. Those are still available and they still work. They're not the preferred way of doing things, but they, they're still available and they still work. You need to understand what those are and how they differ from a, the, big, the, big, uh, the big points not, not in detail, 
but you have to understand the big points of how they differ from MSAL and the V2 endpoints. The, the, the biggest things that I think are the takeaways for MSAL and the V2 is number one, um, the V2 endpoints, there, it's a converged auth, which means that I use one authentication endpoint, set of endpoints to authenticate if I'm using a Microsoft account or a work and school account, Azure AD, right? That's one thing you need to know. Another thing you need to know is that the V2 endpoints are, um, oh, what was I just about to say? I just forgot it. I just completely blanked on it. What was I gonna say? The V2 endpoints are, oh, they support dynamic consent. Whereas the V1 only support static consent. You should know what the difference is between dynamic consent and static consent. Now, when it comes to working with the different authentication libraries, for the most part, the exam is gonna push you, or at least you should be more familiar with MSAL than you are ADAL. And you should understand how to configure a single page app using MSAL.js with a registered app that you created that we talked about on the past slide. And you should also know how to configure a web API or a, um, uh, let's see, a web API or a, uh, what do you call it? A, um, uh, like a web, uh, a web form, a web app, a web-based app, like a .NET Core web app, uh, MVC app or API. You should understand how to configure that. You should understand the code for the most part Focus on the .NET Core implementation, not the .NET Framework. Focus on the .NET Core implementation of MSAL. There are going to be questions on there that, do, that, that show you code snippets and ask you, what is this doing? It doesn't ask you to write any code, but it asks you more to look at the code and determine what it's doing or pick the right code option to do something when it comes to authentication. So just be familiar with those two things. Two things being, how do I configure an a, a, a .NET Core app, ASP.NET Core, a web API, a console app? How do I configure it to work with MSAL and a registered Azure AD app? And then how do I configure a single page app with MSAL.js uh, to handle authentication that way? You also need to understand the concepts, as I mentioned a minute ago, between uh, dynamic and static consent and static and dynamic permissions and static permissions. You should understand what the differences are between both of those. Okay. Now you should also need to understand about permissions and how you deal with those permissions when you're consuming an API. Like if I built an ASP.NET uh, uh, web app and I wanted to connect and communicate with a, a uh, say Microsoft graph. All right. You need to understand how to configure delegated permissions for your app. You also need to understand what the difference is in how to configure application permissions. How are delegated permissions and application permissions, how are they different? And not only that, you also need to understand how do you identify admin consent requirements? So what, when I, when, how do I identify when I need to go through admin consent? And then how do I actually trigger it and consent to things for application permissions that require administrative consent? All right, those are some of the other things you need to be able to focus on. I'm going through all these topics first. I know no, I don't see anybody asking any questions. I can come, we don't have a ton of slides here. I've only got, I think like four or five more and we got 20 minutes. So if you have questions, if you're holding on to them, that's perfectly fine, but we have plenty of time for questions at the end on the different topics that you need to know, okay? Another thing that you need to know here is how do you implement authorization to consume an API, right? So what does that mean? Kind of going back what I mentioned earlier, you need to understand how to configure your application to not only support logging in to Azure AD and support users logging into your web app with Azure AD. But you also need to know how to configure the app to be able to obtain an access token for an endpoint that your app is going to support. For example, if I built a web app and that web app is gonna show me data from somebody's calendar using the Microsoft Graph, then I need to know how to not only support 
someone logging in, but then how to, how to log in and authenticate uh, to my web app. But I also need to show how to support um, obtaining an access token from Azure AD that I can use to go call graph. So part authenticating with Azure AD for my user, which is gonna give me not an access token, it's gonna give me an ID token, an open ID connect ID token. And then I also need to see how do I get an access token to show that as well. Um, let's see, you also need to know, the, and I'm, oh man, I was supposed to be in a code format there. The arrow on the right, okay? There's a couple things. There's a couple things I want you to also that I think you should also know. Well, sorry, not you should also know. You do need to know. There's questions about this. What is the difference between acquire token silent and acquire token? Now, in this slide, it says how do you use MSAL JS and call acquire token silent and acquire token? I don't like the way that that's phrased. Um, that's from one of the notes that that I have from the from the exam, but you should really take JS out of that because it really is anything MSAL. What is the difference between acquire token and acquire token silent? You need to know what the difference is between those two methods and why you would use one over the other or why you should fall back to one when one of them fails and when that would happen. The arrow on the right side, or the, sorry, the left side, my other right, the one that says configure and implement uh, incremental consent scopes. You need to understand what dynamic consent is, I said this already, but you need to understand what happens and how you can go about obtaining uh, incremental consent in your app and why you would want to do that. Why is that a good idea? Why is that a good idea to build your app using dynamic consent? When does it not make sense to use dynamic consent or incremental consent? When does it make sense to do static consent for some things and incremental for others? You should understand the differences there, right? A lot of this stuff's in the docs, but a lot of it's kind of hard to, it's, it's hard to pull out. Now, now is where it gets kind of fun. Uh, well, let's just, let's put fun in quotes. There is a whole section about things you need to know about what if I wanted to build my own API, my own web API, my own REST endpoint and I wanted to secure it with Azure AD. So I, I want to make sure that you have to submit a access token, a valid access token, and your app must have, have gotten uh, that access token by being granted permissions that my API requires. You need to understand how to do that. How do I go through and create an API? How I register it with Azure AD? How do I then configure it with MSAL in order to be able to have it secured with Azure AD and be able to receive access tokens? And how do I make sure that I validate those tokens to ensure that those tokens are, um, they came from Azure AD? Now you don't need to know the code on how to go through and to validate the access token. You need to understand the process and how MSAL makes it easier for you. Like under the covers, how do I do this, right? Think about it like, um, think about it like baking a cake. I can't do it. I've never done it, well, I might be able to do it, but I've never done it. It would probably come out really bad. But I know what the process is. I know you gotta get some ingredients, I know you gotta put some stuff together. Um, I know you, or I, and I know that certain things are important. I know certain kind of flour is important. I know certain kind, you gotta make sure you put sugar in there. It'd be a terrible cake without sugar. Well, actually, maybe not, it depends on the cake. But there's a lot of things I know you gotta put all this stuff together and then I know you gotta put it in the oven. I don't know how long. I don't know how you have to mix stuff. I don't know if there's a special kind of, I know you gotta do beat eggs, but I don't know how much you have to beat them. Those kind of details, you don't need to know that kind of stuff about accessing a token. But you do gotta know that Here's why it's important to cook the eggs. Here's why it's important for me to do things in this order, all right? That's the kind of stuff that I mean when you say validate the access token, all right? Now, here's another one. What about if I take that, that REST API that I've created and I want that REST API to call another API on my, on, on my app's behalf, on my user's behalf? So I've built a web app and that web app 
is going to show the user's calendar and maybe some other stuff. Well, maybe I don't want that web app to go direct to Microsoft Graph. Instead, I want to go to my own API because my own API is gonna have its own business logic wrapped up around it to be able to do things like, let's say we're going to create a webinar, right? Well, that creating a webinar is gonna do a couple things. It needs to use the Graph API to go create a new entry in somebody's calendar. It might need to use Microsoft Teams uh, API or the, the Microsoft Teams endpoint in the Microsoft Graph to be able to create a brand new team and invite the users that register for that webinar into that team so that they can communicate and stuff uh, during the webinar. So I have my own domain API that my apps want to talk to. Maybe it's a web app, maybe it's a mobile app, whatever. That's going to talk to those and then those, and then that API talks to graph. What are the, dip, what are the things I need to, I need to pay attention to there, right? How should I handle my authentication? Is the app, is the API going to impersonate the user or not? Is the API going to, um, is the API gonna, gonna, going to, to uh, uh, connect to Azure, or connect to um, Microsoft Graph uh, as uh, using application permissions? So it's gonna use a different kind of authentication flow like client credentials flow, right? There's a bunch of, all these different things we need to pay attention to. How do I get things like getting the access token, using a client ID and a client secret? Should I be using a client secret? Should I be using a client certificate instead? Why would you want to do that? Those are things that you should definitely know. Okay. Seen a bunch of questions come in. Um, I understand why some questions are coming in that are specific to SharePoint. Remember, we're not doing SharePoint today, guys. We're doing Microsoft identity. I understand why the SharePoint questions are coming in because I'm a SharePoint guy, but I want to focus on just the Azure AD stuff today and the Microsoft Identity stuff today. We have another webinar we're going to focus on SharePoint stuff, but I don't want the I don't want this to turn into like the SharePoint webinar. Okay. Um, I do see some questions though about that. Ah, so we're done. There we go. So we got about ten minutes for questions here. So I got a couple of questions I'm going to run through. If you have a question, I would I'd recommend let's do this. I recommend that you go ahead and raise your hand. Um, to let me know you've got a question that you're typing in so we don't, you don't, I don't miss you. Um, but make sure you put your question, you raise your hand and let me know that you're typing, okay? Put your question in the question, uh, the question panel and I will go through the questions um, that, were, that, are being, that are being submitted, okay? So this is a link to the, um, to the, the uh, or not a link, this is a slide that talks about all the other webinars that we're gonna be doing in this series. Um, and we'll be going into, uh, going into each one of the different workloads. Um, so Christopher had a question. Some of the times for these webinars are showing up, or for these questions being submitted are kind of weird. I'm jumping around for different times. It might be your time zone and not my time zone, which would be a strange way of doing it. But okay, so let me go ahead and answer these. So Christopher has a question. Do these exams have an expiry date? Like the old SharePoint ones, you need to renew them every three years. That's a great question. I don't believe so. I don't believe they do have an exp expiration date. Um, I will look into that. That's a, let me write a note for that. Expiry. Great question. I will find out. Um, Christopher, another question. So the .NET Core stuff for, uh, for like configuring authentication is based upon uh, 2.1 LTS style code, or can this be 3.0 or 3.1 LTS? Hmm. Every, uh, that's a really good question. I don't know what the exam questions are, but what I do know is that all of the self-paced learning stuff is all based on 3.1, the .NET, .NET Core 3.1. Um, it's all tested against that. It all works against that. I would be surprised if it's using the older stuff, if the exam questions are based off the older stuff. But then again, I, if, let me, let me say it this way. I don't know the difference between 2.1 and 3.0 and 3.1 on the .NET Core authentication stuff. And I did just fine on the identity stuff. So think about that in terms of the depth of knowledge that you has to have to have in terms of the APIs. It, there, there were not any gotcha 
type questions. So I think if you know one of them, you're going to be in good shape. If you had to focus on one, I'd go with the 3.1 version because that's the one that's currently supported. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Christopher has a question about, we have two Christophers. Um, can you get an authorization token and not an access token or vice versa? So an access token is used for authorization. There is no authorization token. If I said authorization token, I meant access token. So I use an access token for authorization. There's only two, there's only three types of tokens. There's an, there's an access token, there's a refresh token, and there's an ID token. You should know what the difference is between each one of those and how you get them. Is all, uh, Michael, does all, is all this information in the docs? Which docs? <laughs> all of this information is supposed to be in the Azure AD and Microsoft Identity documentation. Um, in my humble opinion, their docs are not fantastic. They're, they're good, but they're not fantastic. Um, you will be able to answer every question on the exams based on what's in the docs. If that, if that answers your question. So Jay has, a, I saw Jay just post something in the chat, but right after I said that, he said from his experience, um, the Microsoft docs are getting really, really good. It all depends on the team. It all depends on the workload that you're talking about. It all depends on the workload. Some of them are, and some of them are less, are, are not as good as others because it's not one team running the docs. Each individual workload, each product group has their own, right? Yeah, so Jay followed up, Graph in particular. Yes, Graph that, that has done a very good job. SharePoint has done a very good job. Um, I think SharePoint's done a really good job because their stuff is done a lot by the community. Like I, I know I write, well, I'm, so, I'm partial to it because I write a lot of the docs uh, for, um, I write a lot of the docs for the SharePoint team. But in my opinion, um, the docs for identity are, are one of the weaker of the five workloads. Um, in particular, MSAL. Uh, I, I'm in, personally, I get incredibly frustrated with the MSAL docs partially because they're not in the docs. They're in these, they're in wikis buried inside of GitHub repos. And it's, in, once you get into the wiki, it's impossible. I've got more bookmarks um, in one folder uh, in Chrome, just keeping track of MSAL docs. Huh. I see somebody in the chat just said, that, basically said the same thing. Lewis said that MSAL, not so good. Uh, let's see, Gory, is Microsoft Learn enough or any other resources available to explore? You can get by with just the resources that are available from Microsoft Learn. Um, you can, it, it, well, you know what, I can't say that because it really depends on your experience level. Remember, if you're coming in this cold and you're saying, I'm just gonna study the self-paced content that Microsoft has given us, I'm gonna be, have enough to be able to pass the exams, I don't know about that. So it really depends on what your experience level is. And it's not something you can answer very easily because based on the workload, you're going to have different, everybody's going to have a different response. Uh, Christopher, are SharePoint groups connected to the access token? I don't know what you mean by that, um, but that's not really, that's, I think that's kind of, well, I, I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, do questions have sample code or how do you implement it? Um, so as I said earlier, uh, it really depends. The, the questions will not ask you to write any code. It's all multiple choice. You will either be given code and ask what it does, or you will be asked a question. And then some of the questions will have code options. You have to choose the right one or the wrong one because there may be multiple ways to do it. And again, if you go take an exam, you're going to be like, wait a minute, I didn't get a question like that. Andrew was lying to me. Remember, there's a bank of questions and you may not get the same questions that like that I got or that somebody else gets. You may get lucky, you may miss one. Um, like when I took the exam, I, I took it at the same time that somebody else took it. Um, my co-host from our podcast, Chris Johnson. And immediately after the exam, we, after I took it, he took it and then I took it. And then I called him and we, we kind of, we commiserated on some of the questions and some of the ones he got, I didn't get. Some of the ones I got, 
I had no idea what he had no idea what I was talking about. Um, let's see, what languages do you need to understand? So I saw somebody else ask this. I can't remember who asked it, but somebody else asked a question about like what languages do you need to know? .NET Core and TypeScript. Yes, JavaScript, but .NET Core and TypeScript and, uh, and JavaScript and TypeScript. That's all you really need to know are those, are those uh, three things. Uh, let's see. Ah, good question. So this was not in the in the skills assessment that I was I was reviewing before I did the the slides here. So Praveen's asking about: Do I need? Does it going to ask me anything about Azure AD groups, B two C external users, or are they only focused on development stuff? You do need to know about B two B, B two C. Um, so business to business, business to cust. Well. Ever, the world sees it as business to, co to business to consumer, but Microsoft is trying to change the name to business to customer, whatever. Um, you do need to understand about security groups and application roles. Um, I've done a lot with ADAL.js. How much is different from MSAL? Is, there mu is, so, is so much to learn new? It's new, but I mean, if you understand the concept, it's not that much different. Um, especially with um, the implicit flow. Uh, let's see, so we did that, we did that. Mm, do you know if MSDN will give me the ability to practice? Currently we're on AWS and all my Office 365 experience will be self-paced, but I do have an MSDN, I hope to learn 365. So here's a good question with this. You don't need to buy anything to be able to test this stuff, to be able to get pra to practice, including MSDN because you can go sign up for an Office 365 developer account. And with that, you get a free Microsoft 365 tenant with I think it's five or 25 E3 or E5 licenses. You can do everything and test everything with that, with one small exception. And that is if you get into doing, when, you, and when we start talking about bots, when I get to the bots workload, um, I think it's just bots. Yeah, I believe it's just bots. You have to create a, um, uh, an Azure uh, bot framework. You have to register a bot using the bot framework. And for that, you need to have a real Office 360, a real Azure um, subscription with a, a credit card tied to it. You won't spend hardly anything, but that is a resource that is not free without a paid Azure subscription. So I guess what I'm saying is, is max, you can get by with doing, <clears throat> we get doing everything with just an internet connection in maybe five or 10 bucks. And that would be for um, five or $10 US dollars. And that would maybe be for just the um, Azure uh, resources for doing bots. <clears throat> Oh, and yeah, that's right. And Azure gives you $200 credit in the very first month. You'll be more than fine. I was able, I'll put it to you this way. I was able to build all the self-paced content um, for like less than $5 on my, on my Azure bill. I didn't even expense it to Microsoft. It was that, it was that low. Um, is there, are there already hands-on labs set up for us to use? Are there hands-on labs in Microsoft Learning? Yes. Are they set up? No. It is all 100% stuff that you do on your own, but you don't need an environment. Um, it's very easy. Um, it's done very much where you can just sit down. There's very little bit of prerequisites you would have to install and just use an Office 365 tenant. Uh, let's see. I have just a few more questions. Um, let's see. So I got, we are one minute left. Let me do three more. Let's see, do two more questions. And then I have one more poll question for you. Uh, Ron says, can you answer uh, if this is covered in SharePoint section regarding SharePoint framework, is there a JavaScript language or TypeScript specific questions? So this isn't even really a, a SharePoint question. I know, Ron, you said this, this is, you asked if it was a, uh, for a SharePoint section, but this really applies to everything across the entire um, certification, uh, every single workload. Um, the only thing, you, you do have to know some, you have to know TypeScript and JavaScript. If you know, but the, you don't really have to know it like at a low level. You just have to be comfortable with it. You don't have to write it because none, you're not gonna be asked to write any code. You just have to know how to read it and understand it. Um, same with the .NET Core. 
right? You don't have to know how to go write any of this stuff because everything is, everything is, is all multiple choice. Um, so when it comes to like SharePoint stuff, you're only going to work with TypeScript. When it comes to, let me see if I can think, let me see if I can get this right. So for all of the different workloads, for identity, you have to know JavaScript and .NET Core. Most of the identity stuff is all about .NET Core. For graph, it's all .NET Core. For the only JavaScript thing you had to know from identity was how to do MSAL JS. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have Office add-ins. That is all JavaScript and TypeScript. SharePoint framework or SharePoint is all TypeScript. And what's the last one? Teams. Teams is all, it's all TypeScript. It's a mix of node and client side stuff as well. Um, because everything is done, nothing, we don't use Visual Studio in anything. Everything is done using VS Code and everything is done using um, the free editors. Yeah, JavaScript, TypeScript, .NET Core. Okay, so uh, last question here. Oh, that was about the poll. Uh, oh, Jim's got a good question here. Um, do you have to know React? And the answer is no. Um, it is any, uh, for somebody else has the same thing. Um, no, you do not have to know React. React is, is a supporting technology. It is, you are not gonna be tested um, on React. You don't like, for example, if you're doing SharePoint framework work or teams based dev, you don't have to use React. Therefore, Microsoft isn't going to test you on it. But in order to build stuff, you do have to know some languages. You don't have to use any frameworks. The only frameworky kind of stuff that you have to know throughout the entire certification is SDKs. So like MSAL JS or MSAL or the Teams SDK. Office JS for Office add-ins, SharePoint uh, SD, uh, graph S, Microsoft Graph SDKs. Okay, that's all you end up really. That's all you end up really having. Uh, only the SDKs you would have to know. Okay, now I got a question for you guys. I've had three questions so far. This is my last question I have for you. First selfish reason. One of the reasons I'm doing these webinars is not only to give you guys some info, but I'm also doing it because. I do have plans to build a course that is going to help people um, get up to speed um, on the course or get to speed on the exam certification. Now, I saw a comment that just came in and says, trick question, because what's it gonna cost? The answer is, I don't know off the top of my head. Here's what I do know. It is not gonna be a very long course in terms of it is not going to be a, my, Today, I have a course on the SharePoint framework that is pushing 40, 35, 40 hours, right? And it's expensive. Um, it's like 750 bucks today. And the price will go up when it's completely finished. So if people who've already registered for it, they're in good shape. They don't have to pay any extra. But when the course is finished, when the final four chapters are added, we will be raising the price. Um, for this course, uh, my goal is not to reinvent the wheel. My goal is to get this course out as fast as I can. Um, and that means I don't wanna, re, I don't wanna reteach stuff that the stuff is already out there. Here's the way I look at it. Microsoft hired me to write a bunch of content for the self-paced content for the, that's published on Microsoft Learning, right? You guys can go get that for free right now. You don't have to wait for me to, teach, to sell you a course to do that or to build a course that I, I may wanna sell you. So I'm gonna be completely transparent. I'm not gonna try and sell you something that's already out there. Instead, what I wanna do is I wanna be able to say, look, here's all the stuff that you need to know. Here's the things you need to focus on. Here's the certain things that are not in the self-paced content that they tell you that you don't need to know, but that you are gonna be tested on. And the price point that we're looking at for that is I can't commit to it, but I can tell you that if it's more than 200 or $250, then that's beyond the goal of what we're targeting right now. Okay, so it should be something very manageable, especially for what you're going for. Um, oh, significantly less than the ultimate bundle, Kathleen. Significantly less. The goal is to get this out there. For, my, for people who are currently Voitano's customers, uh, I have to finish my course first, and then I have to finish the SharePoint framework course first, and then I can work on this next course. But yes, it will be much less. Um, uh, but it will be much less than that. I'm, 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 I would love to make it closer to like 150 bucks, 
um, because I want this to be, I want this to be a good resource that people can use and, and don't, you know, think twice about going to go uh, to get it. So, um, okay, sweet. I'm getting some great feedback here in the chat and I really appreciate it. Um, there will be an email sent out for people who are interested in it uh, eventually. And there's parts where you may get surveys and stuff, just respond to it. There'll be a whole like early release option for it and, you know, a discounted price and all that. But let's focus on the content here today. I appreciate, I definitely appreciate that. Oh, Christopher, thank you very much uh, for the comment about uh, this being the best webinar. But guess what? This is just the first out of six. And someone had a great question there. I said, well, where are the links for the, other, for the other webinars? And that should have been on the slide. That was a dumb move by me. So I'm pulling up a link here. And let's take this and let me in the poll. And let me, give me, bear with me for just a second. Let me, come on, PowerPoint. Let me get to my, oh, hold on. Zoom, where's PowerPoint? And let me make one update to that slide. Let me put a link to where you can find all of them. Ah. There, save my changes, reshare, there we go. Okay, and let me share my screen again. Come on, Zoom, where are you? Zoom. Ah, I can't see. Share screen. Where's my slide? There. Share. Share. Okay, there we go. There you go. Now I got a link. So if you look, it, all it is is if you go to the top blog post um, on the Voitanos blog. So just go to voitanos.io slash blog. That link is going to, um, that page has a link to every single uh, webinar where you can um, uh, go sign up for each one of these uh, different webinars that we're gonna be doing. The next one, I know I went seven minutes over and I apologize for that. Um, we'll be wrapping it up in the next three minutes. I will be respectful of your time. The link is not active in the slide. Yeah, it's not, it's just, it's a, it's a slide. It's not, I'm just sharing my screen there. Uh, there we go, thanks Rune. Um, so yeah, if you go there, you will, um, if you go there, you'll get where you can go sign up for all the different, um, for all the, all the webinars, for each one of the different webinars. And again, they will all be recorded and made available. Mm, I think I've answered every question. I have one more question from one person who's an existing customer of the SharePoint Framework course. And they're saying, should I go through that, the SharePoint framework course first before doing the exam specific training? Um, uh, or does the order really matter? The more that you, the more of the SharePoint framework course you go through, the better shape that you're in, because that's a lot more detail in it than what I would cover in the certification course. Um, but then again, there's a lot more detail there that you're not gonna be tested on. Um, there's stuff you would do in your day job, but like, for example, that course goes into things like how do you do DevOps and continuous integration and continuous deployment? Okay, it doesn't do it yet. I recorded the content this week and I'm gonna publish it soon. Um, but that, you won't be tested on topics like that. You won't be tested on React. You won't be tested on Angular, but the, the course covers all that kind of stuff. So there's a, there's a little bit of a difference there, okay? Um, the more you do it, the better, okay? Awesome. Hey, everyone, thank you very much for attending this uh, webinar today. I hope you got a lot out of this. Um, I will publish the recording of this and let you all know via email um, when this has been published. I hope to see everybody on Thursday when we do our next one related to the Microsoft Graph. And with that, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see everybody in a couple of days.